Hey guys, so I just got home from my regular job, checking my orders on Etsy, and we have an order for a dark brown English bridle rifle sling. So I thought I'd bring you all along, show you how I make them, and uh, maybe you can get an idea. I'm going to walk you through the whole process, so if you want to make rifle slings for yourself, you can see how I make ours, and you might want to copy the process or change something for yours. Uh, also, <laughs> just to let you know, I just stopped by Walmart on my way home, and I grabbed one of these Ozark Trail... Uh, hatchets and I'd, I'd been seeing these a lot and kind of wanted to just try it out and do a review on it and see how I like it so that'll be coming on down the road too um, so let's get to it okay guys so the first thing we'll do is get this dark brown English bridle leather out as y'all know we use English bridle from Wicket and Craig <clears throat> first thing I want to do set my strap cutter to one inch now i'm not going to zoom in and you know change views or anything and walk you through up close each process or each part of the process i just want to show you the overall you know overview of how we do this so i'm going to cut out my one inch strap with the strap cutter strap <clears throat> now these are 47 inches long total opened up I'm going to straighten this, this end off here and I'm going to measure this out to 47 inches Then what I do there, from there, is I'll mark that 47 inches with my scratch hole. And I cut that end off. And I take my belt tip cutter. And I'll mark mark that shape in. I normally I would punch that through, but the kids are asleep right now and I don't want to wake them up. So I just mark it. Cut it to that shape. Now I have the pointed end. Do the same thing with the other side. Mark it. Cut it. Now one of the hard parts about doing leather work is keeping your area clean. So I use my horsehair buffing brush to kind of keep these little bits cleaned off so I'm not making a working through a mess. So then I'll punch one end for the Chicago screw. Punch a hole in there. Now we need this to fold over to, when it's to, to screw through the loop or through the uh sling swivel on your rifle. So now I'll mark about two inches. I'll mark another hole, fold it over, and go right through that other hole. So then fold it over and I got a two inch loop. And then I'll punch this other hole. And you see I got two holes there. This is where it folds through and then screws together. So then I fold this over to the other end and copy that on the other side. Now if you have any questions about this when it's over with, uh, feel free to comment below or email me or, or whatever and ask me. I'm happy to answer questions. I'll tell anybody how I make the stuff. I want people to be educated on the products and know how they're made.
know what what work goes into them. So there we are. And what I want to do on the other side, or on one side, is actually uh, from that second hole I made on this end, I'm going to go three inches from that and mark a spot for another hole five times. Two, three, four, five. So now I have five holes three inches apart for adjustability. I have all the instructions for this written down in a notebook where I have all my work instructions written down. Uh, but I made so many of these rifle slings for Christmas that I don't have to look at it. Now I've got it down. All the measurements are in my head. I know exactly what I need to do. Because I've just done it so many times here lately. All right, now there we have our all of our holes punched. So what I do now, I'm going to turn you around here to my arbor press. <coughs> I get my uh, logo out here. My logo stamp. Fortner's Frontier Leather. I think I got it backwards. There we go. And about a half inch or so from that hole, I'll press that stamp into it. And now you have Fortner's Frontier Leather logo. Now usually I would hammer that as well, but like I said, I don't want to wake wake my family up. All right, so now we have all of our holes punched, logo stamped into place. Uh, oh, one thing that we need is another piece for the can't tell if this is black or dark brown. That's black. We need another piece for the uh, for the keeper. I don't see any pieces already cut, so I'm gonna have to cut another one. So what I'm gonna do now is take this piece here, cut a straight edge on it, and this goes back to what I was talking to y'all about about these strap cutters in my tools video cut that straight edge adjust this down about half an inch and cut me a half inch strap for my keeper and that's just the part that'll actually go around it and like so and keep it secured. So I cut this end off straight. <coughs> what I do now is I'll actually scythe this piece down a little thinner so it's not too too bulky. You start stacking up too many thicker pieces of leather on top of each other and it just gets entirely too bulky. So the keeper, I'll shave it down a bit thinner. <coughs> and let's see. Get that all straight too. <coughs> Alright. So now, where's my punch? Oh, right there. I need to punch a hole on one end. This is for the rivet. that hole. Now I just fold this over to the thickness or to where it's going to be. And I just wrap that around, see exactly how long it needs to be, and then I'll mark a place for my other hole. Punch that hole. Get that end off. Now I have my keeper. 
So next, so I want to bevel these edges a bit. And then I'm going to slick all my edges. Now I'm not going to bring you along for that whole process of me slicking these edges because it'll be too long and too boring. But basically you put some of this gum track account or water. Either one will work for burnishing the edges. And I'm just going to slick these edges up. And then I will bring you back when I have all the edges slicked and I'm ready to coat them. Okay, so now I'm back. I've got all these edges slicked up, burnished, and ready for edge coat. All right. So, yeah. Edges are nice and smooth. Holes are punched. Logos in place make sure to close up anything that you're using i cannot tell you how many times i've turned over dye or gum track of cam through edge coat on top of a project when i was almost done with it and completely ruined it so when you're done using a dye or something make sure you close it so here's phoebing's black edge coat i like to put black on the dark brown edges it looks really nice uh, so what I like to do is, these daubers are really fuzzy, so I just kind of hit them with, a, with some fire and get all those fuzzies off and get them nice and round. Otherwise, those little fuzzy pieces hanging off will really mess up your work. Uh, you'll have little brush stroke looking deals on the, uh, on the, front, of your, on the front of your piece. So what this does, and you see we've got this raw edge here from where I cut it. Once you slick it, it lays those fibers down on that raw edge. And then you put your you put your edge coat on here. And it coats those edges and protects them. And it'll dry and harden. And it'll put a nice protective layer on those edges. Now I do this for the whole thing. All the edges will get coated on everything that I do. I don't ever leave edges raw. Now I've seen some supposedly high-end leather work with raw edges. Um, I'm sorry. I just if you're skipping steps and and not doing the uh, not doing the things that you should be doing. And you're charging an outrageous price for it. You should be ashamed of yourself. Don't skip steps. So there we are. Get all these edges nice and coated. There's one side coated. We'll let that dry a minute and we'll flip it over and do the other side. All right, so the other side is coated. I've flipped it over and I'm gonna coat the other side or this side. By the time I'm done with this side, the keeper edges should be dry and we will put those together. So guys, uh, just so you know, our Patreon patrons 
are going to be seeing this video before everybody else does. That is one of the benefits of the uh, Tier 3 membership on our Patreon page, is that you get early access to all instructional videos. So if you want early access to videos like this and, and more in-depth instructional videos, which I will do, um, please join us over at our Patreon page and, and show us some support over there. So we can start doing this full time and <coughs> providing you with better quality and uh, more content. So I'll be able to put more time into it. It's, it's, it's really hard sometimes now, you know, just doing this part time. Like I said, I just got off tonight from my from regular job and I'll stay up till two or three, uh, two or three o'clock in the morning working on this stuff. But I love doing it, so I love making things for y'all, so it's worth it. But I'd like to be able to do it full time for sure. Okay, now these edges are dry on the keeper. So we're gonna go ahead and put the keeper together. One second, I'm gonna grab some rivets. Okay. Now for this, I use um, these rivets. I, I get rivets from uh, Tandy Leather. And I will use the small, small, teeny tiny little um, rapid rivets. Put one through this side, one through the other side, or, and then through the other side. Oh, wrong end in. Sorry, apparently I've forgotten what I'm doing all of a sudden. That's the way it goes when you're doing videos. That's when you mess stuff up, when you're trying to show somebody else how to do it. Um, there we go. I wanted the uh, wanted that on the outside. I was about to put the back on the outside. That would have looked crappy. So, back over to my Arbor Press, since I don't want a hammer right now. And I'll stick my little anvil inside of there. Put it under the arbor press. And... Press my rivet into place. And there we are. We have a keeper. <coughs> so. Right, let's see. Edges are... Pretty good. The edges feel all right. Ah, uh, still a little bit wet. So, as you can see, I got some on my fingers. So, we'll come back, let these edges dry a little bit, and then we'll finish assembling this thing. Okay, so the edges are dry. I'm back. <coughs> now we're going to put it together. Uh, <coughs> now, have a tasty beverage. Since I do this so late, I gotta have caffeine. Uh, but you, you know, you can um, consume the beverage of your choice. I'm not picky. I don't care. Um, so now we'll put these Chicago screws in place. We'll put the smooth end on the outside so it looks nice and fancy. We'll screw it in there. Sometimes these things can be a little different. There we go. Threads don't want to line up right sometimes in them. All right, the Chicago screws, if you want to know where I get them, uh, you can get them from Tandy Leather or any leather working shop. These are from, uh, I think I got these from Tractor Supply, but they come from Weaver Leather. Okay, so now I've got my Chicago screw in that end. Now in this end, what I'm going to do is I'll put my keeper on first. Bring it down uh, right before the last hole there. Oops, sorry. Right before the last hole. And then put the other end through the keeper. Now the keeper might be really tight at first. I'd prefer them to be tight so I know they're going to loosen up over time. Leather will stretch. Um, so you don't want a really 
nice loose fit at first. You want it to be to be tight, really tight, because it's gonna stretch and it's gonna loosen. So there I got my keeper on. Put my next Chicago screw in place. If you're still with me and you're not bored to death, screw it on. Tighten that down a little bit. Now I don't tighten these super tight. Uh, some people put Loctite in their Chicago screws before they ship them out to you guys. Or they'll put glue in them. I've bought stuff like the belt blanks from Hobby Lobby. And, and other things that, or no, it wasn't the belt. I bought something from Hobby Lobby one time that had Chicago screws already assembled in it, and they were glued in there. Now, why, are you, if you're gonna do that, you might as well just use rivets, just rivet it into place and have it permanently there. But I want these to be taken out so you can put them on your rifle. So I'm not gonna glue them or put Loctite in them. Uh, I'll let you do that if you want to. So, um, they're not going to be super tight when you get one of these slings. They're going to be loose so you can make adjustments as you see fit. Uh, so don't, if you're going to make something like this and sell it with Chicago screws, please don't glue them or lock tight them. Um, so there we have it. I finished English bridle leather rifle sling. Thanks for joining me. I hope that helped you out or, you know, you just enjoyed seeing how we make these and, uh, I'll see you next time in the next video. Uh, remember, join us over at Patreon. See you later.